having understood about fault tolerance and having understood about redundancy it is important now that you understand what is fail group or a failure group by default in asm whenever a stripe is written the copy of the stripe is written to another disk if it is normal redundancy then there will be two copies kept one primary in one disk and a secondary in another disk if you have implemented high redundancy then it keeps three copies of every stripe primary secondary and tertiary now the question is what is the fault we are going to tolerate the default level of fault tolerance in asm is at a hard disk level that is why each stripe or rather each copy of a stripe is kept on different disks if you remember the video on fault tolerance there i said we may want to increase the level of fault tolerance from let's say a disk level to a storage server level how do we make asm do that the idea behind that is fail groups so when you create a disk group in general you will say create a disk group with a list of disks now when you create a disk group with a list of disks then each disk is a fail group but let's say you want to create a disk group in such a way that one storage server would be a fail group and another storage server will be another fail group then very simple when you create the disk group you will say create disk group fail group 1 made up of the disks from one storage server fail group 2 made up of disks from another storage server by doing so now when a stripe is written to one copy goes to one storage server and another copy goes to another storage server though there are many disks available inside one storage server it's not going to keep the primary and secondary within the same storage server because in case this storage server fails both the stripes are lost because we want fault tolerance at a storage server we implement fail groups at a storage server level and stripes are maintained accordingly which comes to a point how many fail groups should we have if you implement normal redundancy then you need a minimum of two fail groups so if you maintain fault tolerance at a disk level or you maintain each disk to be a fail group then you need a minimum of two disks in a disk group if you want high redundancy then we need to maintain three stripes then we need to maintain three fail groups now what if i have three disks each of 1 terabyte and i implement high redundancy the maximum amount of data i can put in will be only 1 terabyte it's actually less than 1 terabyte because of metadata that comes in so if i have a 3 terabyte storage array with one disk of 1 terabyte each the moment i put 1 terabyte of data into this it is going to stripe it two more times and it is full whereas if i need normal redundancy and if i have two hard disks of 1 terabyte each when i put 1 terabyte it is going to spread it now with just two disks or three disks i can only put 1 terabyte of data but what if you have 10 terabytes of data for example you land up creating 10 terabytes of data in a normal redundancy disk group 10 terabytes gets converted into 20 terabytes of data that is put in similarly if you create 10 terabytes of data in a high redundancy disk group it's going to result in creating 30 terabytes of data in the storage because it is going to maintain three copies so obviously if each storage server has a certain number of disks you may not be able to cater to 30 terabytes of data with just three storage servers then you keep increasing the number of storage servers let's say i land up having 10 storage servers and i am maintaining a high redundancy which means three copies the data will be distributed across all that but being high redundancy i can tolerate only two failures meaning if you have implemented fault tolerance at a storage server level 
then you can tolerate two failures of storage servers and still your database is running well. Even if you have 10 storage servers in the disk group, with each storage server being a failure group, you can tolerate only one fault. You can tolerate only one storage server failing because you have implemented normal redundancy. Now, if you use the default behavior of ASM, wherein each disk is a fail group, even there it is the same. So what you need to keep in mind is, what is the redundancy you set will determine how many faults you can tolerate and what is the fail group configuration you have done to determine what is the fault you want to tolerate. So normal redundancy results in two copies, high redundancy results in three copies. Fail group specification tells where each copy of a strike will be kept. By default, it is in different disks, but you can always raise it. Maybe you put a bunch of disks in a storage server and there are controllers. Each controller connects to a particular bunch of disks. You may want to have fault tolerance at the controller level, which means each bunch of disks which belong to a particular controller will be defined as a fail group. That's the concept of fail group.